Today, I'm going to be showing you what Foundry version 13 looks like. Version 13 will be coming out relatively soon, and it will break all your modules if you upgrade to it immediately. So do not upgrade to it right when it comes out. And definitely don't upgrade to it right now. I recommend you wait a few months before changing to version 13 when it does officially come out. From what I've been told, it's mostly feature complete. Nothing major is coming in at this point. In this video, I'll be going through all the patch notes and highlighting everything Foundry version 13 has to offer so far. Remember to like and subscribe if you like this sort of content. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you're going to notice when you load up into Foundry 13 is this beautiful new UI. Even the game pause widget looks really cool. You're also going to notice that the tabs on the right side look a little different and slightly more minimalistic, which I'll be honest, I'm still kind of getting used to this new way of clicking on things. I did like the old one. I used to be with it. But then they change what it was. Now what I'm with, isn't it? Change is hard. There do seem to be settings though that will scale the UI for you and change the font size. And testing two added opacity and fade speed to their settings. What I do want you to notice though is how all these UI elements are faded out until you hover over them. Pretty smooth. Well that's new, the latency and FPS. Cool. The bottom right also seems to have a little chat box that stays on top even if chat is collapsed. So probably let your screen be sort of focused more on the action of what's on the screen and that way you don't need to have the entire right bar up at all times. You can also change the setting to make it just a notification pip so it'll delete the chat box in the bottom right entirely and show up with a pip whenever there is a notification. Here's the notification pip in action. The UI seems to extend to like for example making a scene the configuration buttons all look a little different and sleeker and even the file picker seems to have gotten this new ui treatment oh yeah i guess i forgot to mention there is a light mode <laughs> whatever floats your boat man Overall, the new UI looks sleeker. I'm gonna have to get used to the buttons on the right side, but for the most part, it looks nice, but I'm sure you're not here just for the new UI. So let's check to see what else is new with version 13. I've gone ahead and put a goblin named Boblin on the board and I'm just gonna move him. Check it out. Look, drag ruler integrated into the system and it does seem to rotate the token in the direction it's moving. Hmm. Okay, look, I'm not a fan of the token rotating. So let's see if we can change that in settings. Okay, it's in core settings, automatic token rotation off so now it won't move around and you can use shift or control mouse wheel to rotate the token as before and yeah the token rotating thing does look way better with top-down tokens so also control scroll wheeling while moving the token actually moves them elevation wise upwards or downwards which is kind of neat and then of course there's waypoints if I hold control and just keep clicking as I move them he can be dragged sort of in a waypoint like manner and then he just just goes to the waypoint you set. All of this would be familiar to you if you've used the drag ruler module, but it's been sort of absorbed into Foundry itself. Not the actual module, not the actual code, but they've made their own version of it. Also the uh, top left measure distance feels a little bit smoother overall. It does seem to be a little just that much sleeker than the old version 12. This is the old drag ruler, which is a little less fine tunable. Also now pressing R on your your keyboard toggles the drag ruler. You know, you could just try version 13 out yourself right now if you wanted to. If only a hosting provider would be able to provide such a service to try an experimental new feature of version 13. Wait, today's sponsor Molten Hosting does just that. Molten Hosting is my preferred hosting provider for Foundry VTT. I've tried all the hosting providers out there. I've self-hosted, I've bought a flippin' server in Germany. No, not this type of server. As a professional game master, I run eight to 10 sessions a week. Molten Hosting has been the most stable service hosting provider I've ever used. I reached out to them so that they could sponsor me because I love their flippin' service. I can personally vouch for Molten Hosting's both customer service, professionalism, and stability as a server. If you want a reliable and also cheap hosting provider starting at $4 a month, check out the link in the description below. And thank you so much, Molten Hosting, for sponsoring this video. I'm gonna show you the next part of version 13, which is really cool in my opinion. These are the new doors. Let's draw a door from here to here. I'm gonna go to the wall controls and let's go ahead and draw a door. I'm gonna go into the controls and select the animation state to 
maybe a slide. And then we're gonna find a door texture, which by the way, Foundry gives new door textures with the Forgotten Adventures asset pack. So I'm just gonna put a large wooden door here. Select it, update the wall, and that's a new door for you. Now, if I move Boblin, the goblin here, and have him open the door, it's gonna slide open. Although it's currently clipping onto the stairs, so let's choose another. How about a swing? Look at that! Oh, it's swinging inwards. How about a swivel? That's actually pretty cool. How about ascending? Oh, it goes up like a portcullis! Ah! You get the idea. These new doors look pretty neat and you can put your own texture there if you like having your own type of doors or there's a lot of door textures. Check them out right here. There's also a bunch of other options here like reversing the door open direction for example so it doesn't open into Boblin. You can make it double doors. You can even change the animation strength. Wow. I never thought I'd be this excited about doors. Another feature brought to you by Foundry version 13 is the combat turn marker, which used to be only by modules. So the turn marker uh, after we roll initiative and begin the combat will immediately begin showing. Uh, it's going to look a little janky because it looks like they haven't fully implemented the texture for it yet. It's just a foundry icon. So we're just going to change some settings. Of course, there's going to be settings. And the first setting is the animation that we can change from a spin to a spin pulse. So it looks sort of like this. You can also just change it to a pulse to have it pulse yes the media source can be changed i don't currently have a good turn marker icon though so we'll just use the default one and finally you can change the disposition tint which will change the turn marker a little bit based on it, whether it's an ally or an enemy actually maybe i do have a good turn marker yes yes Wait, Shrek Chan, what are you doing? So that's what the turn marker is. Let's see what else is left in Foundry version 13. One thing that you will see is if you make a script, it has these little colors. I'm not a programmer, but I'm sure it'll be useful for those of you who do script. For reference, this is version 12. The later patches have some other changes. For example, it looks like there's a calendar API, although it's still a bit janky. If you hold Alt while holding the drag ruler, it hides it from other players. Tokens can now emit darkness. If you have a region of light and a region of darkness, you're gonna assign priority to a region. For example, I can make this region a priority one and it will override the darkness oh did i mention that now you can make regions that make the ground difficult terrain yeah just select modify movement cost multiply it by like two for example and then when you move boblin it'll actually update the movement to be difficult terrain look at those numbers also they updated the roll tables to look a little different although not the biggest fan but that's okay i guess it is what it is theoretically it's meant to look a little smoother but i think it's a little more cumbersome to edit it there's also the ability for modules or game systems to add their own custom cursors which is cool this is ember's cursor for example version 13 has a lot of stuff and i know i've missed a thing here and there so let me know in the comments below what i've missed and that's basically version 13 there's going to be some minor tweaks like i said but this is the biggest changes you're going to get version 13 is being worked in 10 and with ember and i don't know if you've seen ember yet but it's gorgeous check that video out right here and like and subscribe thank you very much